So what is up guys, this is Nick here from Everything Tech and welcome to this LG Stylo 2 full in-depth review. We're going to take it through everything you need to know so when you get out of here you probably don't need to watch any other review. I will have this review time coded so go down in the description and check out the spots you want to see whether it's the camera, everything, or if you just want to watch everything and just have the full rundown on the LG Stylo 2, which I would recommend because this video is gonna cover everything, you can go ahead and do that as well. But let's get into this review and cover everything right now. Let's go. All right guys, let's kick this baby off with a hardware tour of the device. Let me boot this guy up while we're talking about the device itself. But on the front of the device, you're gonna find yourself a 5.7 inch HD screen, which is 1280 by 720. This brings it in at a pixels per inch of 257 pixels per inch or PPI. So you can see the LG logo right there. We do have a notification light here up at the left and we do have a five megapixel front facing camera that shoots at 1080p, 30 frames per second. We do have an earpiece right here, guys, right next to the camera. And um, we do at the bottom have a microphone jack, 3.5 millimeter, a mic for your voice. We do have a micro USB port right there that's not USB type C. And uh, going out to the side here, you could see nothing, a nice sleek design. I do wanna mention before we go over to the back that the device's display is, comes up over the, you know, the bezels. The glass kind of is raised so you can see. So if you're wondering about dropping the device, you might want to go ahead and get a case because the display is a little bit raised here on this LG Stylo 2. So going over to the back of the device, you're going to see that we do have the 13 megapixel camera right here. And um, we do have a flash right here. This is 1080p HD video recording. Also shoots in 720 if you set it. You do have your volume rocker switches and a power button. Now this power button is not a fingerprint scanner. This power button is just a power button. Right here is your stylus location and boom, you could see there is the stylus. It does have a nice, you know, length. So it's pretty long if you want to, you know, if you got long fingers or short fingers, it really does give you an impression that it is a pen, like a pen you would use. You can wrap your fingers around this really nicely, but we'll talk more about the stylus later. And it does, you know, slip right in here. And there's none of those problems like we had on the Note you know, five where you put it in backwards and you destroy it or something like that. And uh, right here is another mic port right here as well. Going out to the middle of the device, you can see we do have the LG branding and a speaker right here. And there is like an etched in pattern. So it gives it like this, this shiny effect where it, it's like circles across. I don't know how to describe it. You can kind of see it in the light here though, but it does have a nice, you know, brushed metallic look. So if I go off to the right side, there is a little indent right here to peel off the back cover. If we peel off the back cover, you could see there's no NFC on this back cover and it's not flimsy, it's a polycarbonate. I wouldn't do this and try to break it though. But going off to the back, you can see you do have a micro SD card expansion slot and this does take the nano SIM card. So if you're wondering what kind of SIM card it takes, it takes the nano SIM. Right here is a removable 3000 milliamp hour battery here on the LG Stylo 2. So now let's get into the next section of this review here. All right guys, so let's talk about specifications of the LG Stylo 2. Now the LG Stylo 2 does have a Snapdragon 410 64-bit CPU. So that's four quad-core A53 cores clocked in at 1.2 gigahertz. So those are the lower powered cores of the Snapdragon series, the A57s being the higher powered ones but they're still pretty strong. So performance is not such an issue. We'll see more about that later in the review. The weight of the phone is 144 grams. This phone is evenly dispersed weight, so it doesn't feel very heavy for its size. Actually, it feels very light for being a big phone indeed. It's 7.4 millimeters thick. By comparison, an iPhone 6S Plus is 7.3 millimeters thick. So if you ever held the iPhone 6S Plus, that is a similar thickness as this, although this feels a much lighter than an iPhone 6S Plus. It does have a micro SD card slot we talked about, but it goes up to 128 gigabytes on space, which is quite hefty. And I've seen some other models 
on GSM Arena that says up to 256 gigs, but I was not able to confirm that here on this device. I was able to use 128 gigs. However, it does have a 16 gigabyte ROM, which is basically the onboard storage of the device. And it does have a stylus. We talked about that earlier, and it does come in GSM CDMA carriers. So who does this device come for? This is a question you might be asking. This device is available for Boost Mobile, Cricket, Virgin Mobile, and Straight Talk. Now the Straight Talk model doesn't have Marshmallow, it comes with Lollipop, so this review is not gonna show you the same software as you get the Straight Talk model, but Boost Mobile, Cricket, and Virgin Mobile have these. Now the only one that's probably easily unlockable is the Cricket model. I know I said this comes unlocked, and um, not the Boost Mobile one, I should clear that up. The Boost Mobile one's probably gonna be a little bit tricky to unlock. It does have a SIM card slot, but it is a CDMA phone, and I've never really had good luck unlocking these type of devices in the past and making sure all the frequencies of the LTE bands work. So if you want to try one out that you can unlock, you might want to go with the Cricut model. Um, I looked for this phone on LG's website unlocked, and it doesn't seem that they sell it, which is a bummer. But the Stylus 2 Plus, the one with the full HD screen, I hope, I'm hoping that one comes unlocked, but that's, that's besides the point. But basically, yeah, that's the specs you get. You get two gigs of RAM on here as well. So multitasking should be a breeze on here. And that's the specifications of the LG Stylo 2. I should also mention that this is Bluetooth 4.1 on here. And that is the latest technology on Bluetooth. And I found that this is Wi-Fi A, B, G, and N. I did not see any AC information on this device. And the Wi-Fi speeds themselves didn't feel like AC quick. So if I'm wrong on that one, go ahead and comment down below, but I don't believe this one is AC from my experience and from my research. I wanted to take the time to talk about the build quality of the LG Stylo 2 and the build quality of the device, it's very nice. It's a plastic device, don't get me wrong, but the plastic seams, they all snap in really nicely. So you're not gonna have a trouble here in terms of that aspect of the device. So if you snap this on, Everything just pops right into place as per usual with an LG build or a Samsung build. This is typical stuff here. And the glass itself, I did not find any information on if it is Gorilla Glass, but in my time using it, I've had keys in my pocket. I haven't seen any scratches on the display. And also the display does feel pretty durable from my use. I wouldn't want to drop it flat down because of its raised you know, design here. But overall, I'm very pleased with the displays, you know, durability itself. In terms of the stylus, the stylus is also very durable and I don't feel any creaking or bending on the stylus as well. And the slot does go in really nicely. So it's very clicky. It doesn't seem like there's going to be any issues there with the device. Now the camera lens I want to mention is raised over so slightly. It's probably like half of a millimeter or whatever but it's very slightly raised. So if you drop this phone on a table, there is a small potentiality that you will scratch the lens. So once again, this is probably a device for long-term users that want to get a case. Now, in terms of the ergonomics of the device, because I have big hands here, you can see, ah, this, this device is going to be a stretch for most people. This is going to be the kind of device that if you got small hands, you're going to hold it with one and you're going to do everything with one. Now, LG did include some features, but we're going to talk about later one-handed features later in the review. But you know what? It's still ergonomically going to be for bigger hands. Even I have trouble reaching all four corners of this device here. So overall, ergonomics, in terms of the curvature, it does curve really nice in your hand. And because of its lightweight, this phone does not feel as big as it would look in terms of the weight of the device. It feels like, wow, they really made this phone pretty light and, and ergonomic for its size. Now, one thing I do want to mention is with the display, the display, because of the way these bezels are very thin at the top and down here, not as big as the bezels in the past of the LG, something about this display gives me the illusion that this is a bigger display than it is. This feels like a six inch device. This device actually feels bigger than most 5.5 inch devices I've used. Just because of the way the design is, it gives you the illusion that this device is bigger than it really is. It really feels 
very nice and big gargantuan size if that's what you like it feels like a mini tablet and i have a zte z max 2 which also is a big device but because of the way it's designed it doesn't feel quite as big as this this phone feels like a little mini tablet so if you're into those kind of aspects of devices this is going to be great for you and that's all i want to talk about about the build quality pretty good here a little bit slippery on the back as well so it like i say a case might be recommended all right guys i want to talk a little bit about the display of the lg style 2 so like we said earlier this is a 1280 by 720p hd display and the display is very nice to look at and it airs more on the warm temperature side so more of a yellowish hue more of a hue that you would see on something like a 6s the 6s plus not more cool like you would find on something like the older iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, as well as some of the older Galaxy devices. This is a very warm display, and that makes it better for reading. And with the display, it is IPS, so you can see it on the angles, although I found the colors to wash out just a bit on the angles, and you can see on these very far angles, it's not really that vibrant of a screen, but you see a lot more when it's straight on at you. Now, in terms of the display itself, it's very sensitive and very responsive, and that's probably because of the stylus and because of the knot code. So knot code is very responsive, and overall, you're not gonna have any problems with your taps here on the device. So overall, the display's you know, response times are pretty darn good here. Now, if I go into settings and we go into display settings, let's go back, let's go into display settings. You can see you could change the font types on your display as well as you have the option to make them bigger and larger. And you do have bold text like you would get on the iPhones, you know, the bold option on there. So also you have the reader mode. So the reader mode is basically a blue light filter, which is essentially night shift mode on the iPhone. And you have the option to also change the home buttons out where you can change the color combination at the bottom. So you can see that color combination down there. I'm gonna hit okay. And now it is white which goes along with the theming of the user interface. Also, you could change buttons. You have the option to drag and rearrange these icons at the bottom. You do have Capture Plus, five at a time, um, dual screen here, and the notification dropdown, which is very handy because the display is so big. If you tap that, you can now bring your display down here. But overall, I would say this device's screen doesn't get that bright. I always had it hovering anywhere from 75 to 8, 100%. When I was out and about and even indoors it's just not that bright it's not that enjoyable in terms of you know super brightness but it's an enjoyable screen nonetheless so overall what are my overall takes on the screen so the screen is going to be great for people who love to read and just you know read a lot of things on their device like if they're taking notes and things like that but I don't think this top Samsung's devices in terms of media consumption. So if you're a big movie watcher or a YouTube watcher, you might want to go ahead and check out Samsung's Galaxy J7 or somewhere in the same price range for that for just content consumption. If you're more of a reader, more of a content producer, more of somebody who's writing a lot, taking notes, productivity, this phone is going to be a better display for you in that regard. But overall, I found it to be a little bit sensitive too. If I do this, you can see it's not responding because it's so sensitive, it's hard to pick up the touches. So that is another feature too. You can pull out and you know check your wallpaper on your LG Stylo 2. All right, we have to take time to talk about software. So let me hop in the settings and show you that we are running Android version. Let's see, let's go to status. Let me go back. I think it's in software info here. Let's go to Android version 6.0.1 here. So this is Marshmallow, and I'm not gonna talk about all the Marshmallow features. I did a 10 awesome features on Marshmallow video. That was actually done with this device, and those 10 features are pretty much all the nice goodies that you get in Android Marshmallow. I just made that video a couple days ago. So I'm gonna leave it linked down below in the description in a card right up here. You should see it pop up right now. And um, yeah, you could check that out for Marshmallow features. But basically, let's cover a little bit about that. Marshmallow just makes this device much smoother, and it also brings some awesome new features to the device that you wouldn't have found in the older Stylo. Now, let me go into settings real quick and put this back to tab view because that's the way it comes out of the box. But what really you're going to notice is there's a lot of included LG 
theming and features going on here. And that's what we're going to talk about next. So brace yourself for the next section. This next section is going to be very in-depth talking about LG special features. Okay guys, so if you decide to pick up the LG Stylo 2, the first thing you're going to notice out of the box is, wow, this thing looks like a G5. If you know what the G5 software looks like, you're getting it here on the Stylo 2, at least the ones for Boost Mobile, Virgin Mobile, and Cricut. Now you can see that you do have this new icon theming going out. Basically they did an oval design, basically like an Apple kind of design. But I would say this is kind of a mixture between Apple Qs and Samsung Qs, like a little mixture of both. What I mean by that is they have the curvature icons similar to what you're going to find on an Apple device. And even if you go into the settings here, they have that white theming and that, you know, that black text that looks very Apple-like. And you're going to see some more features that are very Apple-like in here as well. But it's also Samsung-like because they included the LG Smart World. Now, an LG smartphone, you have the ability to theme out your LG Stylo 2 here. But the themes that you get are not going to theme out the notification tray and the settings like you would on a Samsung device. So it's basically like a... Let's see, like if you went and got a theme on the store itself, the Play Store, and put it on Nova Launcher or something like that, it's kind of like that. So let me see if I could find that real quick. I'm not sure where that feature is. Okay, so here's the theme. So I did download one. This is a theme right here. So if I go ahead and apply this theme, let me apply that, you're going to see nothing has changed but the home screen. Now, yes, it's a nice touch, but I just don't find it as, you know, theming as Samsung's version. So Samsung's version is a bit better here, I would say, in terms of the theming aspect of the device. Now, going into the icons themselves, you're gonna see it set up like this. There is no app drawer on this device. So it's a little bit weird at first. You're gonna be like looking for an app drawer and there is no app drawer, but there's also like hardly no bloatware. I don't see any Boost Mobile stuff on here, although I do have the, um, I don't have it activated at the moment. I did have it activated the first day for call testing, but I don't have it activated anymore. But I don't see any Boost Mobile or any bloatware. Now this may vary from which one you get, but it's very nice, it's very nice and clean. And LG does have their own like new theming in their icon. So if I go into weather, you could see this is a little bit changed. If I go into, let's see, clock, it just has a whole new skin going on here with LG new UX user interface, which is very nice here. Now you do get used to this, you know, no um, app drawer, but in order to keep it clean, you might want to create folders. But what's nice about it is you don't have any app drawer anymore, but unlike Apple's iOS, where the icons fly up, up here, you are able to put them anywhere on the screen. So that's pretty cool there. Going up into the notification tray here, you're going to find that LG put some nice additions here. You do have your Capture Plus, which is going to take you into your note-taking application, Wi-Fi setting, sound, Bluetooth rotation, data, location, reader mode. Reader mode is basically night shift mode from Apple. So if I tap it, you can see the screen just turned a little yellowish color. Airplane mode, flashlight, and you can change these right here and move them around as you would. You got color inversion, do not disturb, and battery saver. So also, you might be saying, oh, that's too much bloatware going on there. You can also tick those off as well. And now you just have that up there in file sharing. And I believe you can also tick off file sharing. So you can make it very clean like that as well. So that's pretty much the notification tray on the LG Stylo 2. Let's hop over into settings and check out more about this device. So at first you're going to notice we do have that tab view right here, which can be kind of annoying if you're used to the list view. But what a lot of people don't know, and most people who use LGs do know, is that if you tap this three dot menu, you can go to list view. Just, you know, it's just more clean in my opinion. It's more what people are used to. So if we go into airplane mode, you have that under wireless networks, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth settings, mobile data setting, call setting, share and connect. And if we go to more, you can see we do have mobile networks, VPN, but we don't have NFC here on the LG Stylo 2. So if I go back one, let's go down to device. You can see I do have sound and LG includes their own ringtones. You have ringtone ID, sound with vibration, vibrate type, do not disturb, lock screen on notifications. You do have that option to turn off the notification LED. And we do have some sound effects and a notification sound here. Going down to home screen, this is where you're gonna you know, mess with your home screen. Here are the wallpapers that are included on the device. I wanna show you these real quick. So you got that one, you got that one, you got that one there, you got that one there, you got that one there, 
that one there. And they're all pretty nice. I think you're going to enjoy the wallpapers on this device. Going down to carousel effects. So screen swipe effects. You do have panorama. You do have breeze. You do have slide, which is the one that comes with out of the box. And see, you could change that up. Also, you could sort your icon grids on the home screen. So you have a 4x5 grid, a 5x5 grid, and a 4x4 grid. So that's pretty nice there. Going into the lock screen settings, you do have the ability to have the knock code. So you can do your knock code on your LG as typical for all LGs these days. And you do have different lock screen effects. So you have particle, soda, basic circle, vector circle, but I leave it on soda because it's like a soda can. It's pretty awesome. You do have shortcuts on the home screen, which are also customizable. So this device is super feature packed here. If I go to context and lost phone, you can do that too if you lose your phone. And going back out here, you're gonna see we do have mini view, which is basically what I was talking about with the one handed earlier. So if I go here and I go like this, slide across the bottom, you could see it does shrink down to one hand and you could resize this easily here on the LG Stylo 2, which is a very nice touch in my opinion. Now going back into those settings where we were talking, let's see, where are we at? Let me go back to settings here. Let's go back. And you could see storage and USB. We do have the ability to expand storage. It comes with about 10 gigs out of the box here. Memory usage, and let's get through this. Now we have dual window, and we do have security settings, language, backup and reset, shortcut keys, the pen we're gonna talk about later, quick cover view, and we do have some developer options, which I enable. All right, guys, in terms of the storage of the LG Stylo 2, you do have about 10.8 gigs available out of the 16 gigs when you use it. And um, you can't expand like we set up to 128. You can move apps through an apps to SD, but I did not find a way to move them straight off the device. I know this is Marshmallow, but I did not find a way to, to remove them off of the device. I think maybe LG did something where you can't do that. I don't know why they would do that, but I didn't find a way. If you guys find a way, please help others out down below in the comment section. But that's basically storage on the device. And you can send all your pictures and videos from the camera, it's gonna ask you immediately once you put an SD card to do that, which I would recommend here on the LG Stylo 2. All right guys, let's talk about that stylus. So when you pull the stylus out from the lock screen, you're gonna see, let's pull it out real quick. When you pull it out, you do have that quick note feature like you get on the Samsung. So you could say, hello there, you know, and you could go ahead and you could, you know, erase it right here or you could save it here. Let's see if you click that right there. You could save it to your gallery or to your quick memo apps. I'm just gonna save it to the gallery. Now, you do have this little thing called pop window. So basically it's this little pen icon that's floating on the screen, which you could move around. And with the stylus, you could press that and you do have the ability to hit pop memo. And basically this is a resizable note taking application where you could write anything you want, you know, little smiley face, hello. And uh, you can write that down, LG Stylo 2. And from here, you do have the ability to change colors. Now the pens are not customizable within the pop window because this is just for quick notes and you could erase here. You have the ability to share and you could hide that in the background, move it around, leave it there while you're doing other things. So you got that note kind of hidden but still visible nonetheless and you could close that window out. Also you have Capture Plus. Now Capture Plus is basically, if you're in the web browser and let's see, let's go to product reviews, whatever, how to deals on CNET. And uh, let's see, if you wanna take a Capture Plus, this is one of the best features where you can go ahead and write on the screen and you could do things like that. Also, you have the eraser button here, which is gonna erase that. You can change the size of the eraser to bigger sizes if you like that. On the pen here in Capture Plus, you can change the pen. So you have like this pen, the stencil, you do have the brush here, marker here and chalk, and you could change the transparency the size and you have multiple colors and you also do have the option to change it to whatever custom color you want which is a very nice touch there also you might be wondering well what if i just want text well you can just hit text here and you could start writing some text in the quick memo application that you save that you know capture from so let's go back into that browser and let's do this again let's go to right here Let's close that out. Let's go here and let's do that capture plus one more time. 
And you can see we can cut things out with this option right here. You have the option of a square, a circle, or a hexagon. And then this one right here is like a butterfly looking thing. But basically what this is, you can like trace it out yourself, which is the best feature I like. Because if I'm doing something online, I just want to trace it out. So you could see, you could pull that out. And then you could resize this and you could share that. And also you just hit check. Once again, the share. Hit this three dot menu. You could share. You could change your paper style. But if you change your paper style, then you're just writing another quick memo. Also right here, we do have pop scanner, which is basically going to scan information on your screen, sign documents and things like that. And then an option to go to quick memo here, um, the basic note taking application. And then right here, you do have Amazon Kindle here, which is my shortcut application. But if we go into settings and we scroll down to the pen settings, let's see. I don't know. We're having some lag there. What's going on with you, LG? You're having lag straight on the review. So this pen, you guys want to hear about how accurate it is. You just seen that it is not the most accurate all time, but I'm not going to tell you this is not as accurate as the note. The pen, if you say that this pen is as good as a note, you would be lying to yourself because this, this pen is just not as good as a note from my experience. Now you do have pop memo and op pen pop, which we talked about already. You do have pen detection, which will vibrate up here. When you pull it out, it'll vibrate up here. You do have pen keeper and app shortcuts where you can change your applications. So anyway, what are some good uses of it? Basically some good uses are taking notes, you know, cutting things out if you're a graphic designer and, uh, you know, writing on the screen and sharing some funny things with your friends. But basically that's the pen. I would say out of a scale of one to 10, I'd give this pen an eight out of 10. Too off because sometimes it's not the most accurate and sometimes it doesn't register presses. And I don't, what I don't, what I mean by not the most accurate is I don't feel like there's a, such a precision on the writing. Like, hello, like it's cool and all. It's really like nice, but I don't think it's as precise as the, the technology that you find in the Galaxy Note. So I'm just talking in terms of the Galaxy Note. Sometimes I'll be writing and I feel like I'm writing quicker than it's registering, but that's just my experience. You may differ, but that is the stylus on the LG Stylo 2. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the one-handed features of the device. We talked earlier about how you can do that to shrink the screen. We can do this to shrink the screen, which makes it very one-handed. But we can also talk about another feature that LG includes here, which is going to be the, let me shrink this back out really quickly, X that out, which is the keyboard. So if we do the keyboard right here, you can see if I go like this real quickly, it's going to shrink that keyboard down and you can bring this keyboard over to your left and over to your right. Now, if I come back out, it's going to bring it out. Also, if you go into the keyboard settings, this is awesome. On the LG Stylo 2, you have the ability to change the keyboard height. So if you got smaller hands, you can make this keyboard smaller, as you can see. And I think this is one of the most underrated features on LG devices. So you can make it to your size likings as big as you would like. Now there is a maximum range you can go to. So if you need even bigger, you might want to go download an app called Big Keyboard on the Play Store, but that's cool. Also, you have the ability to split these keyboard into, you know, for two finger split, and as well as change the landscape type of keyboard right here, you can see. So that's pretty cool there and you must apply it. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Also on the keyboard theme, you can go ahead and hit the black theme if you want black, but I didn't want black here. But like I say, that's another one-handed feature that I wanted to mention was the keyboard here. And I believe you can also do this on the dialer as well. I'm not sure exactly um, how to enable that, but I'm pretty sure you can do that on the dialer as well here. So let's talk a little bit about an extra shortcut that we might not have noticed. I talked about this in the camera review, but you can double tap this power down button to access the camera. So if I double tap this really quickly, it's going to go right into the camera here. And also, if you click it one more time, now you can take the picture. And also within the camera, if you just swipe like this, you'll go to your front facing camera. And if you swipe like that, you'll go to your back facing camera. Also, there's another quick shortcut key up here. The top one's going to go to Capture Plus. So if you want to take a quick note without pulling the pen out, you just double tap. So we're going to double tap here. And you can see now we can just jot a quick note down. And that's pretty cool there. So that's a couple of quick short keys on the LG Stylo 2. Now in terms of the audio quality of the device, now the speaker is on the back and it's cut out and a lot of people do not like this placement and I would have to agree, I do not like this placement either because it's very easy to cover this speaker up and I know this might be a little bit exaggerated but in reality, it's not exaggerated. This is very easy to cover up. 
I was doing laundry the other day and I put my phone down to listen to some music and I decided, you know what? I'm gonna put it down like this and it totally covered the speaker. I had to flip it over. But one nice thing about the G Stylo 2, I noticed is that when I flipped it over, I had the ability to just easily change the volume with these rocker keys. So I really like the placement of these keys for that reason because you can easily just go up and down with the volume if you're laying on a table listening to music. Now in terms of the actual loudness of the speaker, the speaker is very loud itself. It gets very loud for, you know, this device, but the speaker itself is not very punchy or bassy. So don't expect the quality, high quality, high bassy, punchy speaker. Just expect a very loud, serviceable speaker. That's the best way I can put it here. If you guys want to hear a little sample, I'm going to go ahead and go to one of my YouTubes just to see, you know, something that we can listen to really quickly. So I do have the small keyboard enabled. Typically can't type on that small keyboard because I don't personally have small hands. But uh, let's go to videos and let's play the camera review. You can go check out the camera review like I talked about earlier. But you can see it's a very flat, but you know, it's a serviceable speaker. Let's talk about gaming a little bit before we go on with this review. You can see that I do have some games installed. I'm not going to play games on this review. I might do a gaming review of this device, but let me just tell you how the gaming performance has been from my experience. You are able to run games like lighter games very easily and because of the screen is very big and you know enjoyable the gaming experience was very fun to use on this device it felt like I was carrying around a little Nexus 7 tablet or something it was a very nice gaming experience now Modern Combat took a little bit of time to load, so I would say your more graphic intensive games are going to be a little bit of a drag loading. So just be a little bit patient, but once they get fired up, I didn't have any graphic stutters or nothing like that. Now of course if you play Marvel games or those really uh, taxing games on the GPU, you might get some frame drops, but I still believe that you are going to be just fine in terms of actually playing the game. It's not going to be to a point where it crashes out and you can't play the game here on the G Stylo. Two. So in terms of the call quality on the LG Stylo 2, I was not able to test this um, that much, but I tested it a couple of voicemails, a couple of calls, and the call quality was just fine. It was serviceable. It wasn't the rich HD calling that you would expect on something like, you know, the newer galaxies and, you know, the LG G5 and stuff like that, but it was very serviceable. And, you know, call quality these days is not too important. As long as it works, it works. We're more on to the you know, media aspects of the device. So overall, call quality is serviceable, works just fine, and the speaker is loud enough to hear people talking on the speakerphone, so pretty good there as well. Now, is this device pocketable? You might be asking yourself, how does this feel in the pocket? What's the size in the pocket? Now, if you can see, I got really big hands here, and that's just not a camera angle. I'm gonna show you an example of what I'm talking about. Here is an iPhone 5S case right here, and you can see how easily this just fits in my hand. So I do have big hands here. And for me, this device was pocketable because I'm a bigger dude and it just fits in my pocket. But for anybody with small hands, this is gonna be a purse phone. If you're a girl, this is a purse phone. If you're a smaller guy, this might be your backpack phone, or it just might be something that you throw in a bag or something. This is not a small phone by no means. It literally feels like a phablet, a mini phone tablet. So yeah, not the smallest, not the most pocketable device in the world here. So let's talk a little bit about the camera here. I'm not going to go in depth on this camera here, but you do have quick simple modes. You have panorama here. You do have some modes here, settings. But like I say, I'm not going to cover this off. If you want to see everything about the camera, check out my camera view. I'll leave it in a card up here. But you can take quick pictures. You can take bursts and stuff like that. And you do have the ability to share your photos here. But everything you want, want to know about the camera of this device, go check it out in my camera review. I did a whole dedicated video towards this. But if you just want to know how does it perform, it's excellent for the price. You're going to be very happy with the camera here on the LG Stylo 2 from the front and the rear. All right, guys, one of the best parts of a phone, if it is very well, if it performs well, and is the battery life. And let me tell you guys, the best part of this phone, I have to say, was the battery life. As you can see, five hours, 22 minutes on screen time. I had 20%. That's a screenshot. And uh, let's see, 33 hours usage. That's standby mixed with use cases, mixed with, 
you know, the screen on time. So this phone is easily a day phone. This phone's a day and a half, two day phone. If you're really light, you can go easily three days with this phone if you're really light. If you're using it like most people use it, this is gonna be an easy wake up in the morning at eight o'clock, go to bed at midnight, one o'clock in the morning, you're still gonna have battery life left on this phone. Now, standby time is ridiculously good on this phone because of Marshmallow Doe's, and I believe the software is very optimized as well here. Plus, you have power saving modes on here as well, battery lifesaver modes, you don't even need them. You could put this phone on to sleep in your pocket, and this phone would literally just last a week. If you did not turn this phone on for a week, I can almost guarantee you that it would still be on from 100%. You know, if you put on 100 and then you waited a week, I can almost guarantee you this would still be on after seven days. I noticed that the standby time overnight drops about 5% per, you know, 12 hours. So think about that, you know, do the math. It would still be on after a week. So battery life is a definite win here. Charge time is about three hours from zero to 100. Um, you know, three and a half, four if it's completely shot but it's not too slow. It's not the slowest I've seen. And overall, battery life and charging times have been, you know, acceptable here on the LG Stylo 2. All right, guys, let's talk about a couple of my negative aspects and then my positive aspects, and then we'll cap this review off at the end here. So my negative aspects are the screen doesn't get that bright. Uh, I couldn't see the camera very, very well in sunlight. So I thought that that was a negative aspect. I think that, you know, the, the brightness, they could have did something with the auto mode to make it even brighter outside, but it never seemed to impress me in terms of the brightness. Now, another negative aspect from my experience, like I say, this is my experience, um, is 720p. I think, you know, at 169, almost 200 bucks for this phone, 130, if, I, if you catch it on sale, you're getting in $200 territory for this phone with taxes and everything and a case and everything. And most phones at this price point have a 1080p screen now. Now I know that that's a newer thing. Budget phones are just now starting to get the 1080p, but I think they could have threw in even a lower quality 1080p display would have been nice. But for 720, this is actually one of the better 720p displays I've ever seen. I think they do something with the sharpening on the text because you cannot really tell that that's not 1080 on the text portion. But when you start getting to those fine details, that's when I notice this is a 720p screen. And if you're pixel peeping, you will see some jaggy edges on the text here. So that's the second negative aspect. The third negative aspect is the video recording. I didn't think the video recording was the best in the world, although the camera pictures were great. I think that if you're looking for a content video creation tool, this is not gonna be the best. You still might wanna get a better camera if you're gonna be doing videos for you know, YouTube and stuff like that. What is another negative aspect? Well, there's not really any more. Maybe the speaker on the back is a negative aspect because you can cover it up easily. But like I say, you know, you might be saying, well, why are you saying all this for such a cheap device? Well, let me tell you, people are spending money on this device. They're hard earned money. And I don't care if it costs $1. $1 is $1 and people wanna know what is negative about this device. That's the balance of the world, yin and the yang, negative and the positive, feminine and the masculine. Now, let's talk about the you know, positive points of this phone, and there's plenty to be had here. The screen. I said it was negative because of the 1080, but here's the positive points. The positive point of the screen is it's very big, and I always felt like I had this little TV in my pocket. It's very, the way, like I told you, the way the bezels are designed, it's just... It gives you the illusion that you're just holding this little productivity machine. It's just very beautiful. And even I have a ZTE Z Max 2, which is also 5.5 inches, but that phone feels like a, like a little phone tablet. This phone is starting to feel very, you know, tablet-like, mini tablet-like, more so than any other, you know, bigger phone that I've used lately. So I think you're gonna enjoy the massive screen size and just the way the software is designed for it, the pen, it's just great experience. Speaking of my next positive access, the pen. You can get very productive if you know how to make use of this tool. This is not something that should be just kept in here. If you make use of this tool, you can have so much fun with this. I mean, guys, seriously, if you're a YouTube creator, you can cut out pictures. You can literally design your, your thumbnail and paste that picture on top of, you know, a bokeh effect or something like that. Also, if you want to share some text with people, you know, you don't got to go finding the links. You could just 
cut it out of the browser and share some text with people. Also, if you like, you're not really good with your finger typing, you can make very accurate presses. And also like if you're doing a Google Docs, for example, if you're doing Google Docs and you're writing documents, you don't have a laptop, this thing could be very useful to you as well. So let me do a new document here. And you could see once we start a new document here, let's, let's get that pop window out of the way. Let me put this full LG keyboard. You can also use this pen for writing. Now this writing feature does come with your finger. You could do it with your finger, but it's so much more fun to just do it like this. So you could say hello there. So yeah, the pen's another positive aspect. What's another positive aspect? Storage. There's plenty of storage on this device. I believe you're gonna be fine in the storage category. And uh, like I say, the battery life is just amazing. Also, this is a positive aspect, the software. I think the software in LG, this is probably the best software I've ever seen on an LG device. It's very optimized and it's very quick. So if I go into the, you know, the applications, you could see they just fire right open and they seem to hold well in the background in terms of the RAM management. So I'm very happy there with the LG software. It's just a very smooth experience and it just feels like butter. So those are my positive aspects of the LG Stylo 2. So who is the LG Stylo 2 for? Well, are you a student? You need a productivity phone. This could be a great phone for you. It's got the pen, you know, it's, it's fully featured. This phone is so feature packed that I can do multiple videos, which I'm going to do. That's why I created the playlist, the LG Stylo 2 video series. This review was long because of how productivity packed, how feature packed this phone. This was a challenging review just to do to so much this thing offers here, but fun nonetheless. Also, this device could be for someone who is on a strict budget, wants a note style device. They don't want to save for a note. They don't want to drop $600 for a note and they want a pen, you know, great phone for them. Also, this could be great for people who cannot, you know, see smaller screens. They want a big, easy to use display. I think this phone is good for people who are not very good at phones and also people who are good at phones. So we do have the easy mode on here as well. Let me search that for you. But for older folks, basically, if you want to, you know, you want to use the easy mode, you can do that here. Well, I can't type, but <laughs> you got the easy mode for those, those folks who can't see. It's not popping up, but it basically it puts everything on front and center on the screen, very easy. And the text gets really large on the screen, large screen, great for old folks with impaired vision and they don't really want to type. They can use the little pen to get very, you know, precise taps in there. Also, I think this device would be great for, you know, a youngster who just, you know, got an A on his test or you know, his parents are getting him something as a gift and he wants a really nice phone. They could really shock him with this one and he probably would be a very happy camper there. And finally, I think this device is for the working adult who uh, they just, you know, they're budgeting their money. They're trying to get shit together and uh, they don't want to drop a whole lot, but they also want to be like, I got this little blue device or I got this off brand device. They want to feel like they got something that's uh you know, they pull out their phone, they're going to feel like, yo, well, that's what's up. That's probably a good device for them as well. Well, pretty much that's going to wrap this review up. I know it was long. Thank you for sticking around if you have already. Don't go yet. I got to ask you a question. What is your favorite thing about the LG G Stylo? And also, if I missed anything that is floating around in your mind that you thought that I should have covered, please go ahead drop that down below in the comments. It helps me improve future reviews and it also helps us to discuss and chat about that down below. Like I say, I'm not perfect. We're just doing our best we can with what we have. And anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, please go ahead and share it with somebody who could find this helpful. Subscribe to the channel for more technology videos like this one. Be sure to be out wherever you are and I will catch you all in the next episode. Peace. No, 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 no.